covering the network storage and the configuration. We'll cover a brief overview of them and how to set them up. First off, we'll talk about network and direct storage types. We'll also talk about the access and protocols that network storage uses along with the storage preparation and accessing. So, network and direct storage types. First thing you have is NAS, the next thing you have is SAN, and the next thing is DAS. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage, SAN is Storage Area Network, and DAS is Direct Attached Storage. With the NAS, you have a cheaper storage than the SAN. It's easier to implement. You have a server and that server will have shared files. You're able to implement, implement it with current infrastructure. So if in your network, if you do not have any storage types on there, you're able to just set this up, set up a server, have a lot of hard drives into it, and then be able to implement it out with very administrative functions. Just taking a server, setting it up, and then letting it go. It offers shared storage over the network. Again, the server, you set it up, you configure the files and then users will connect to it as needed. It's the lowest performance so it doesn't really require a whole lot of performance you just need many hard drives in it, a network connection and then able to offer those resources with very little user interfunctions. Next you have a SAN which stands for Storage Area Network. It's a shared storage access over the LAN. It's expensive and requires special training. The SAN isn't really for people that have never implemented these things. You do require a little bit of training to be able to do this, but in the most part, it is easy to implement. You have something called an HBA, which stands for Host Bus Adapter. Host Bus Adapter is basically a port that is connected to a cluster of hard drives. Switches. A lot of times, SANs offer switches. They will, a group of servers will be connected together, and then they will be able to use this particular switch for those servers only to be able to offer their resources. Vendor specific hardware and software. With a SAN, a lot of times you have to have a vendor specific to be able to use these. It does require a little bit more on the front end as far as cost goes, but whenever you have Cisco products with Cisco products, you have a lot better functionality than say for instance Xylon or Omni with Cisco or Barracuda or something else of that nature. The configuration does take some time setting up. You have to open up particular ports to be able to implement this. We'll talk more about it later on. And it offers the highest performance. Highest performance because it's not just a server. It's a group of servers or a group of clusters that are offering their services out. Also has very good fault tolerance. Block level allocation. Block level is a particular way of sending information to the network as needed. You have file level and block level. We'll talk about those later too. The last one is direct attached storage. Direct attached storage is directly connected to a computer. Basically it's like a USB with an external. Most of the time it's used by local PCs and local laptops. Not really so much on the server end but it does offer that. The protocols that you have is IDE which stands for Integrated Development Environment. You also have SATA and then you also have SCSI. We'll talk more about those later, but SATA is probably the newest one. SATA, you, you have the option of having SATA 1, SATA 2, or SATA 3. Each one has speed associated with them. SATA 3 is the fastest. SATA 1 is the slowest. And with the DAS, most of the time it's not part of a design, mainly because the user will take an external hard drive or a flash drive or something of that nature, connect it to their computer, and then do what they need to do. So admit administrators usually don't know that they exist however most administrators don't allow them onto their network they have to have authorization to have them in. Next we're going to talk about accesses and protocols. We'll cover the Ethernet fiber channel, the IP, we'll also cover iSCSI, we'll also cover FCP, fiber channel protocol, and fiber channel over Ethernet. Ethernet is most commonly used inside the network. It is the typical RJ45 and it is eight pins. It's cheap and easy to implement. It doesn't really require a whole lot on the user. You just have to have the ethernet cable match the speed. You can't have cat three NICs inside of a cat five network. It's not very compatible. It's not as fast as FC fiber channel. However, it does offer for quick implementation when needed. 
you're able to use 10 gigabit Ethernet, but that does require the higher grade in Ethernet, and it does require a NIC, a stronger NIC. The T568A and the T568B are important. Knowing the color scheme is important. Whenever you go to a new network, you need to know those color schemes. You need to be able to set it up. You have to have the pins match on each side of the cable, knowing that they go orange white orange, green white blue, blue white green, brown white brown is very important. FC, common in 10 gig networks. Fiber channel is very widely accepted inside the network and a lot of networks actually use fiber over ethernet. They just use ethernet going from the switch to the actual workstation itself. However, switches to switches, switches to servers most commonly use fiber. Fiber is also common in WANs. The reason why fiber is common in WANs and wide area network is because sending information over large geographic areas is a lot easier whenever you're traveling with light versus with ethernet. The ethernet will lose its attenuation whereas fiber uses light doesn't lose its attenuation as fast as what ethernet would. Connect server to storage and the topologies you have point to point, abbreviated loop, and switch fabric and it's used with long distances, as I said, with WANs. The point-to-point -point is basically one gear to another gear, and then the other two are ways that the network uses fiber channel inside of its network. Internet protocols, IP, operates at the internet layer of the TCP IP model, and it provides traffic routing. IP is a connectionless protocol, and it's unacknowledged. And what that means is that it sends the packets out, but it doesn't know if the other side received them or not. It just sends the packets out. It doesn't ask for an acknowledge. An example of IP, IPv4 is 192.168.100.1. IPv6 will be something along this nature. IPv4 is a technology that is actually going out. They realize that they ran out of IP addresses and that they're having to implement something else. IPv6, on the other hand, has a limited number of IPs. iSCSI, Internet Small Computer System Interface, is another way of sending information whenever it comes to a SAN. iSCSI sends packets via SCSI command, and you have SCSI, which is a connector, like a HVA, that connects servers to storage devices. Well, they can't just talk directly. They have to have a protocol and iSCSI is that protocol that sends the information from the server to the actual storage network. Fiber channel protocol is another type of command that iSCSI uses. Basically, it will send the packets over long distances in case the storage device is not inside of the same building. They transmit SCSI commands and they utilize hardware to transmit packets. So, whenever you connect a, a server up to the network, it will send the SCSI commands through the NIC out over uh, the fiber channel, but it'll send them out in SCSI commands. So that way they're able to connect to a SAN or connect to a storage device and be able to communicate back and forth and relay the information that they need to relay in the speeds of fiber. The protocol offload engine, PoE, that's just another form that they're also called the fiber channel. Fiber channel over Ethernet, FCOE, that is, use Ethernet instead of fiber channel. They're able to have the speed of fiber, but they're using Ethernet to have that speed. They use the transmit SCSI commands also, and it's cheaper than fiber. In case there is an issue with transmitting the information back and forth, you can just use fi uh, FCOE. You can use that, so that way you don't have to have the cost of the fiber channel. You're able to send out the speed and send out all the information via an Ethernet instead of using a fiber channel or using a SCSI. And it is capable of using 10 gigs. Storage preparation and accessing. It's the network share, multi-patching, LUNs, zoning, and LUN masking. We want to talk about these also. Network shares. is resources available across the LAN. They appear on a logical machine as a drive with Microsoft OS, SMB protocol, service meshes block protocols, use Linux, OSF, NFS. With Linux operating systems, you use NFS protocols, network file share protocols. Network shares are basically 
a share folder out somewhere on the LAN, most of the time on a NAS or a SAN, that whenever you access my computer, you're able to see that as if it's a drive. A lot of times you'll see the drive icon, and then there'll be a T below it, an upside down T below it. This lets you know that you're accessing a share folder, that that drive does not physically reside on that machine, but it is a folder inside of a hard drive somewhere else on a storage network. This allows you to be able to access, say for instance, a share drive. You'll access that share drive which will hold your company's information, the departments, the IT staff, forums, things like that. And you're able to access that drive from any computer. You don't have to be at that one computer and whenever you move to another computer you lose that. You just remap to that drive and then you have all your information that you need. Multi-patching is a form of fault tolerance. It creates multiple paths. Basically you'll have instead of having one port for this SAN or for this NAS you'll have two ports for this SAN or this NAS. So you'll be in case one switch goes out of commission you'll be able to use your secondary switch. Just a redundancy so that way you're able to offer your services up at all times without a loss. Uses NICs or HPAs, multiple means of getting resources, multiple NICs for connecting connectivity or HPAs from a PC. As I said, you're connected to two different switches. The, the file server is connected to two different switches and if one switch goes down, you're able to still get to your information via the other switch. Lines. Logical unit numbers. Operates as technique identifiers. It represents a virtual hard disk from a block of allocated storage within a NAS or a SAN. A LUN is basically an identifier used to associate with a hard drive or a virtual disk. It takes the first bits out of the file or the folder and it allows you to be able to access them virtually if needed. The device that's requesting information is called initiator you're initiating the contact so therefore you're requesting it. The device that performs the request is called a target so therefore the device that's going to be sending it to you is the target. The next thing is zone and LUN masking. These are very important whenever it comes to security. Zoning lets you isolate a single server to a group of storage devices or a single storage device. Zoning is implemented at the hardware level. LUN masking allows a LUN to be available to some hosts and unavailable to other hosts. Basically with zoning and LUN masking, the combination of the two, you're able to isolate files, folders, or maybe other drives that you have throughout your network so that way particular users are able to access it. You don't want your accounting people to access business information. You don't want your marketing department to access accounting or business. Well, with zoning and LUN masking, you're able to separate those so that way the business people will only be able to access the business information. Your marketing, accessing your marketing, and accounting, accessing the accounting departments. LUN masking provides more detailed security than zoning. So masking your lines is way better than zoning. As a brief overview, at the end we've described the network and direct storage types the access protocols. We've also talked about preparation and accessing. This is Cyber IT. Hope you guys